if you want to take the recoil down on your lightweight hunting rig, you're going to want to check out the titanium muzzle brakes from Salmon River Solutions. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm here with Ken Trapp from Salmon River Solutions. Thank you, Ken, for joining us. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, this was really fun. We just went out and we did a whole bunch of testing with the recoil rig and various ultra lightweight Salmon River Solution brakes. Before we get to those results, do you want to give us a quick overview of the SRS you know, offerings in the muzzle brake domain, that product category? Yeah, so I mean, we have a ridiculous amount of SKUs if you really put our uh, specific bore sizes and threads and brake diameters, port numbers, there's a bunch. Um, we have two different port designs. There's uh, the Typro line of brakes, and then we have the uh, Chubb, Lil Chubb. There's one that I didn't even bring that's our SRS Mini 5 port. It's the first brake I ever designed. Mm -hmm. um, we have a huge offering. I think we have 12 different thread options, four wow. different bore options. We do offer custom bore options and yeah, yeah, it's a lot to get into. So, <laughs> we, I mean, I'm briefly touching on it, but yeah. if you want details, you can go to our website and yeah. actually see everything that we make. And, and you guys have seen a couple of the breaks on my builds. I did the TIE Pro 2 6.5 for my 6.5 PRC upgrade. I also put on one of your rails on that ultra light weight build. That was basically this rifle. I had it in a different stock at the time and here's that Type Pro 2. And then we put the, the Chubb, which I think I weighed in at about 1.4 ounces on the yeah. 22 GT build. And when you have it in your hand, it's it almost feels inconsequential in terms of weight. So if you're looking for an ultra lightweight scenario for a hunting rig that you're gonna pack up a steep hill, or if you're trying to make weight for NRL Hunter, for instance, yeah. you know, these are gonna be, or if you just wanna dress up your rifle and tell your friends it's titanium, that never fails, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You won't, you won't find a better break for the weight that they are. They perform incredibly yep. well, and I mean, you have a, a break that is that small, performs yep. extremely well, and it's only 0.65 ounces. Yeah, and this this guy here, which which was the uh, this cue for this guy? That's the Typro Heavy. Typro Heavy. That looks like that might be good for like a 338 or something like that. Uh, yeah, we offer them 338 bore and bigger. We do mm -hmm. offer custom bores when people order them. But yeah, those those are extremely effective for you know 338s, big 338s. I've bored bored one over uh, for a 50 cal muzzleloader wow. before, mm -hmm. and yeah. And, and what's impressive is the weight. I mean, if this was stainless, you could just feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah, this you hand you hand it to people, and their yeah. immediate reaction is, "Wow, that's." <laughs> What is this made out of? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just, it's titanium. That's just how light titanium is. Yep. Uh, but brakes are there for a purpose, right? And the purpose is to manage recoil. So what we did was we got the ultimate reloader recoil rig put together here at our mid mountain shoot shooting range, got it all set up. And again, this is the design that uh, I used work that Cal Zant did on the precision rifle blog. Got the same components. I welded up my own frame. You know, we've been testing this with different configs of suppressors. This is our first real kind of deep dive look at brakes, which is exciting. And a little bit more about the rig. We get 20,000 force readings per second at the butt stock. So this is going to basically give you rearward only uh, visualizations and, and data numbers for what those forces are over time. And it's about one one hundredth of a second, that total window that we're, that we're looking at. So... I have some info here uh, that is going to be expanded on in the article. For this testing, what we did was we took the 6.5 PRC rifle and Ken and I took a look at all of the different brakes I had on hand and what he brought in his bag from the shop. And do you want to give us a rundown of the different test configs here we came up with? Yeah, so we started with the Type Pro 2, which you did a video on, so that's already installed on the gun. Mm -hmm. uh, removed that, and then we threw on the Little Chub then the Chubb 6.5, and then the Chubb in a 308 just to see the difference between a brake that's bored for 6.5 versus a brake that, that's bored for 308 shooting on, on a gun that's, you know, shooting a 264 bullet. And funny story on that, Ken told me earlier today, hey, wh what do you think about, you know, the effect of clearance on recall? And I, I told him, it's already on my list, is basically you start at the minimum safe above bore diameter, you know, clearance number. Yeah. And then we'll maybe increment by ten thousandths at a time, do successive recoil testing to see, you know, you, when you have a tighter tolerance, 
those gases are vented more efficiently, so you expect more, you know, recoil reduction. Yeah. But, but is it nonlinear, you know, in terms of peak forces and, and, and all that kind of thing? So anyways, yes, the Chubb 308 uh, was thrown in there kind of for fun to see, get a, a sneak peek at that testing. And then, of course, the bare muzzle. So the way I typically think of things is we take the bare muzzle number and we look at the peak forces there and we look at what does each configuration do in terms of reducing recoil from that peak number. Yeah. Now, what I'm also thinking about is the total area under the curve, which is essentially all the full recoil impulse. It's kind of like another number that you can come up with there. So after all of our testing and after quite a while in Microsoft Excel, lining up all of the data and sorting it, this was the result that we came up with. So as you can see there, the blue line is of course the bare muzzle. Yeah. I was, I was surprised by the shape because the mm -hmm. bare muzzle recoils differently at the peak than the, the muzzle brake does. Yeah, it's got more of a, a rounded top to it. It almost looks like a standard deviation curve, something like that. And then not surprisingly, right below that is the Chubb 308. It had excessive clearance. And yeah, so that, that clearance, that brake is actually bored for 338. Mm -hmm. That's the actual bore because we bore 30,000 30 over, over for yep. a 308. That's exactly what I do when I when I clearance one myself. Yeah, so the difference between the, the Chubb, which is 294 mm -hmm. uh, in 6.5, and the Chubb that's 338 yeah. was a 15% difference in recoil reduction. And you can see that here, the, the bottom two are kind of almost overlapping, and one of those is the, the Chubb 6.5. Really interesting visualization, but we can also look at this in just in terms of the numbers. Yeah. So we take the bare muzzle as basically the datum, so there's 0% reduction there. That is what we're comparing to. Chubb 308, 21% reduction, which is still very noticeable at, yeah. at the shoulder. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the little Chubb 6.5, 29%, and then the Chubb 6.5, 36%. So we did have 15% yeah. difference in peak forces between a properly clearanced 6.5 brake and just throwing a 308 brake onto your 6.5. So when you do pick a brake, think about the clearance. I know some brakes are sold almost universal. Yeah. You know, like a 338 and you're going to stick it on a 22. Well, yeah. it's really not going to do a whole yeah. lot there. You get diminishing results. And yep. I was, that's where port design comes in because there's only a 2% difference between the Chubb 6.5 and the Typer 2 and 6.5. Yeah. Which have two different port designs. Yeah. Because the Chubb is only a two port. So that's a two port versus a four port. But those ports are pretty massive. On the Chubb. On the Chubb, yeah. 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 They're a lot longer. They're stretched out. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's literally like two of one, four of another, right? In this particular yeah. case, they're so, they're so close there. So um, I think either one is going to obviously work really well. And yeah. 36 and 38% recoil reduction is huge. Yeah. That's gonna take that's gonna take a rifle that doesn't feel tolerable and definitely make it tolerable. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, and I mean for this instance, I mean the, this type or two on here, uh, that's a gunsmith sti timing style. It's not mm -hmm. an actual self-timed break, but you're only adding I think that's 1.2 ounces. Wow, that is hardly anything. And I like the profile of this on this particular barrel, you know that I had. This is a Hell's Canyon wrapped benchmark here, yeah. and it just it, it lines up nice. So, really interesting results and definitely more to take a look at here, you know, with the, the clearance test and yeah. with, with other brakes. I'd like to try, you know, the, the heavy potentially yeah. um, on, on something big, you know, whether it be a 300 PRC or, or a 338. I do have a 338 Lafua build coming up very shortly. I'm gearing up for actually right now. So. Yeah, be a good one to put on there. Yeah, lots of interesting things to look at. Uh, well, thank you, Ken, for coming. Yeah. This has been really great. Uh, if you guys want to know more, go to SalmonRiverSolutions.com. You can click on that first link in the video description, and you know we'll have a link to the article, which goes into a bit more detail, links to product pages, and so on and so forth. So here's our question for you is, what do you think of these SRS brakes? Which one would you choose for your ultra-lightweight hunting rifle? Drop a comment, and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, 
please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting. Thank you.